How about a um, motion to approve the minutes of April 25th? So approved. So made. Whatever. So what moved. I, See, so I know. Moved. Thank you. <laughs> Seconded. Today. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Any adjustments <coughs> to the agenda? No. I would say the only adjustment is, is that we have um, Pat here for 615. We have someone else coming in at 645, so we will honor their coming in and stop our business uh -huh. if we don't get through it by 615, okay? Sounds good. Um, presentations and discussion items, FY17 budget. Is that Chris or Annie? It's together. It's oh, in your packet. It's, it's in right. tandem. It's in tandem. It's in your packet. And I know the school committee also is very interested in speaking with the viewing public about this. So the budget has changed since the version that the school committee originally approved in April, at the April public hearing of the budget. I believe that was April, correct? Um, and that is because at town meeting, the um, local contribution that we had requested was decreased by just about $75,000. So the budget that you have before you reflects that decrease in local contribution. And in order, the school committee has to adopt a balanced budget, so we've made the necessary adjustments to ensure that we only factored in the local contribution that was voted on town meeting floor in May. All right. Any, what are we compromising? So what we've had to do in order to make those cuts is we have, we are assuming that we are going to have these cuts restored. That's, if I'm not mistaken, yep. that's what we were told. Well, we're um, third in line. Um, right. That we dropped from second to third. Oh, did we? Are we second in line? I, don't think, I, I really think we didn't got get much sleep last night. Third. Okay. Well, we are we are planning on having those monies restored because what we did was take money out of supplies and text instructional supplies and instructional texts at the elementary and high school for at Hopkins Academy and at Hadley Elementary School. Those are the majority of the decreases. We did make some adjustments as well in electricity and in fuel. Um, but we picked away at materials and supplies in various instructional cost centers because, not that we don't need those supplies, but we don't need to buy all of them in September. So that restoration is vital on town meeting floor in, well, that's not town meeting, excuse me. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's fall it's town meeting. Fall town meeting. Um, at fall town meeting. So that means... Um, We'll talk more about tri-board, but attendance at the tri-board meeting and is certainly attendance at select board meetings as we lead up to fall town meeting will be important so that we can remind the select board of the intent to replenish, restore that 75000 So do you need a motion? Yes, we do mm -hmm. need a motion. Again. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve the FY17 budget in the amount of... Seven million eight hundred and twelve thousand five hundred and fifty four dollars and thirty two cents. Second. All in favor of that? Aye. 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 Thank you all. Superintendent update. What I included in your packet, this really is two point font that it was on a large Indeed. legal Indeed, Notice sheet. My, my glasses yeah. on. Yes. yes. So I had shown the school committee the binder I put together of some artifacts that align with, because it's coming near to the time where you need to do the superintendent evaluation. So I'm dedicating this particular update to just touching base on that and letting you know it's available for your review. So I do have a binder of artifacts in my office. We could also PDF all of those, but it's a lot of paper. So if, if folks are able to stop by and take a look at it, I'm more than happy to walk people through those artifacts and certainly if individuals wanted to say ask me to present additional material on another artifact I'm happy to do that um, and what those artifacts are are they are artifacts that I think demonstrate the work that I've done around the standards for effective practice uh, those standards are also we embedded those standards in the goals that we wrote for me last year we pushed it out to two years because of the gains we were hoping to see on MCAPs. And so the, the standards are of, of effective practice are essentially aligned with each one of the goals. And what you see on the sheet are the impact measures that the school committee had agreed upon at the time that the goals were written. Um, 
And the status in 2014 when I started, then you see updates in 2015. So uh, the self-study completed, the approval of DDMs, also those things were completed last year. Um, the expectations for MCAS, you see under impact measure where, they, where we want them to be, and the yellow saying, well, it's improved, but it hasn't gotten to where we want it to be. And unfortunately, in one case, it actually did go down. Um, the CPI did decrease. And then as you go across, you see the status of impact measures for each one of the goals. Under goal number two, management and operations, the um, impact measures were, again, all educators having their district determined measures completed and the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education approving those. That was incomplete in 2014, complete in 2000 last year. Also a survey of educators on ed eval implementation that was completed last year and the guidebook and the results were shared with the school committee. Um, the survey of parents under goal three, um, of parents and families, 2016 by school committee, that's what you're doing right now. You had one that was in place before I got here, the spring before I arrived, and that's the survey that Humer, I think you'll be talking a bit about this evening. And then also the survey of educators um, regarding all the staff. I surveyed all the staff, if you recall, last year I did that in a Google survey. I opened it up to school committee so you could view the results as they came in, and that's what you see in one of those boxes as well. That was last spring. Um, around disciplinary referrals, some of the things we've been looking at. 2014 was year one for implementation of positive behavioral interventions and supports and our kind of baseline data collection year. One of the places we've seen the, the most improvement um, has been on the bus. So that 95% refers to our bus referrals were at their highest in October at Hadley Elementary School. They were at um, 22, we had 22 students who were getting bus referrals in April and as of May 18th, um, each of those months only had one student. So uh, we've seen the greatest gains there. The, you saw in 2014, I think it was in 2014, you saw a survey from Hopkins Academy that Mr. Beck had done and the places where the school committee was most interested in looking was at students feeling, students reporting bullying and harassment. You wanted to see a decrease in that. We certainly did from 14, 61% of students said that they had um, seen or witnessed bullying and harassment and in 2015 that was down to 22%. We did keep the questions the same. And the increase in students receiving positive reinforcement, you see that's not quantitative there. We still are, even last year's uh, data around PBIS, um, we're, we're getting better at consistency. We don't feel as though our data was, the reporting was entirely consistent. In other words, people were not reporting, not everybody had the same idea of what a major infraction was or what a minor infraction was, of what physical, um, you know, roughhousing was or verbal, ag it, verbal aggression, I don't want to do this, or is that, is that disruption, is that some sort of verbal aggression? So there's all kinds of disagreement and we're, we're getting better at getting clear on what do we mean by the behaviors we expect and the behaviors that we're trying to improve and modify. So I don't have a quantitative indicator for that. And that is my update on goals for this month. Thank you. I should probably be getting you the evaluation okay. soon. We should have, so the, um, you haven't done one, right? No, I didn't do it last time. Okay. Um, so the way it will work is I'll send out the tool. Each person sends their thoughts back to me, and then I compile it, and we go over it. So I'll send that out mm, soon. <laughs> and... It would be great if you could make it time to go over and see the review the notebook, go through it, and then we'll try to do that. Review it at the June or July school committee meeting. I feel like June is already busy. What, what are we doing in June? The upside, we are doing a bit in June. I can't remember everything that's already yeah. on. But the upside to July is maybe, it's unlikely, but maybe we could have some preliminary MCAS data too. I oh, can't. Okay. Um, wouldn't be data that we could share, but in generally we I, we could comment on whether right. or not it was positive because it won't be certified yet. It would still be embargoed if we had anything. Okay. 
We'll definitely have some access data. July it is. <laughs> Any questions for Annie on that? Is that clock right? Anyone know? Is it? Yes. It is? Okay. I think so. Yeah, it's yes. Are you doing the elementary school? I update will. As Unfortunately, well? Mr. Udall is it was had to stay home today. He's not feeling well, so he's sorry he cannot be here. What I really wanted to talk with the school committee about were two things. Um, one is a change in practice, and I'll also announce that um, I want to thank the committee that assisted with helping us to select an interim principal for Hadley Elementary School. We um, the original committee. I'm not sure how many interviews that you had. I'm sorry, I don't know that off the we top of my head. interviewed eight people. Interviewed eight people. So certainly if you want to talk about that process at all. but there uh, We had a great diversity of skill sets and talents. Um, we had about nine uh, search committee members representing all different aspects um, from parents to teachers, special ed focused to um, regular uh, uh, teaching and we um, we just had so many qualified candidates in the end we ended up recommending two that we felt were equally um, uh, amazing and qualified and we were very happy and unanimous in our decision to put forward those two for your consideration and uh, I met with both of those candidates and the candidate to whom I offered this position and who has accepted is Dr. Joan Wick Wickman. Dr. Joan Wickman is currently the superintendent of Carlisle School District in Eastern Massachusetts and previously was the superintendent of Union 28 School District. She has an extensive elementary background. Both of those school districts are elementary school districts. And she also has experience as a classroom teacher and an elementary school leader has principal experience so we're really looking forward to having Dr. Wickman on board and she will start on August 1st um, and that brings me to there's been a practice in Hadley Elementary School of sending out classroom assignments at the end of the school year and this year parents should expect to get their classroom assignments closer to the end of July or early August and here is my thinking on this it's not just about uh, some sort of change in administration. We don't see major changes for that reason. But we have folks who either, if we have still have available school choice slots open or we have move-ins, that things can change with the numbers and then we have to move students. And so now I've been told one thing and something changes and until the closer we get to the start of the school year, the less likely it is that something would change. And um, we'd like to just communicate the information once and say, here's the class assignment. So parents will get that information before the start of school, but typically they've gotten it before the end of this school year. They would be told, here's your teacher assignment for next year. And instead, they'll get it midsummer, early August. And how do you expect that communication to be I was sent? just going to ask that. So we, the, the truth of the matter is that probably what we're thinking in terms of configuration, like for the most part, it's probably going to not change all that much. So more than likely, we will have letters prepared to go out, and um, we would pull any changes. So we'll be good to go. No, we'll I send think those she's out mailing. How are you telling parents not mailing? to expect it? Oh, not to, to expect it? Right. So I'm talking with you all first, and then also I would go to one call now. So Those two questions. questions. Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. one is via mailing, and um, you know, to and then let parents know. Please expect something to come home in the mail, and you'll have your classroom assignment and any other additional information we want to be sending to elementary parents in the summertime. In terms of letting them know about the change in practice, assuming that the school committee doesn't say to me, "Well, here's what you haven't considered," or I would rethink that, which I'm open to any feedback. That's why I'm bringing it up. Assuming school committee thought it was reasonable, then um, I would send out a, a one call now to parents and explain this is a change, this is why. Um, I'm not like terribly opposed, mm -hmm. um, but I do think that there will be parents who wish to know sooner rather than later, and you probably will have some f feelings expressed, I imagine. Mm -hmm. That. Yeah, and I, I, I it's, anticipate that, and I, I, I mean this question sincerely. Yeah. I, I really mean this sincerely. I'm trying to understand why. Yeah. 
what why would this someone need to know now I, I mean this sincerely I, I because yeah. I want if there's something that I'm not sometimes see. parents aren't happy with the assignment and they want to speak to someone about it but mm -hmm. it's not unprecedented I can remember a year when we didn't find out so close to the end of I feel like August. all of my sons we didn't find yeah. out till the end yeah so like it was weeks not, before school started that we found out I yeah, thought that was common yeah I, I, I think it's it, been so long it's gone back and forth it has been in a report card, it used to be, and then it went to the end of the summer. Yeah. And I don't know when it went back to mm -hmm. the end yeah. of the school year, mm -hmm. but it's always, there's always some drama. I haven't heard a whole <laughs> lot about changes requested, honestly. I feel like um, there's a lot of community interaction that happens around, oh, you're, you know, you're going to be in this yeah. class and that class, and kids mentally prepare, and, mm -hmm. you know, parents, you know, share that information. Mm -hmm. It's a small enough community that you end up knowing exactly who's in your class right coming up. right so I, so I do I, I think that that's wonderful and I want to that's why we want to do it not two days before school starts so there is right. time for people to connect around that information and I, I appreciate you saying that Roby because I thought gosh is there something that people are, are afraid of and I but I mean this sincerely I we have really well qualified teachers at there there is no teacher that I would not want to put a student with. We have excellent teachers at the elementary school. If sometimes there are reasons that parents have, I understand that have absolutely they're not making some criticism of teacher quality. They have other concerns. But there's still time for parents to communicate with the principal. And actually the principal for next year will be on board then too. So it would facilitate that communication rather than starting a conversation in July and somebody else trying to figure out where that left off. So I'll proceed with letting parents know, and I too figured that there may be some feedback, and so I wanted to make sure I talked to the school committee about it prior to. We, uh, as requested by school committee, I included in your packet our projected enrollments by grade, and some of our, our folks for school choice actually had decided that they may choice into another district instead of choosing, they changed their mind. Um, if you look at kindergarten in particular, we're looking right now at a total projected enrollment of under 30. So wow. we are considering opening up more school choice slots. That's the overarching recommendation so that we have a larger class. We know when we have this conversation that um, we don't want to exceed 20 students in a kindergarten class, but we have a lot of room even if we had move-ins come in during the summer. Mm -hmm. I feel like our vote though was a specific number per grade do we need to re your, so your total school choice slots you voted total slots although you looked at where they'd be distributed okay. your vote was 17 total slots but what might be helpful is specifically um, perhaps to say that school choice with the understanding that um, in kindergarten to expand school choices without with the understanding that in kindergarten we want to cap enrollment at, at 20 students does that cap kindergarten and yeah, we did. Well, we're still there. We're not. Ta right. You're not suggesting we're taking anyone else in first grade. Just no. It's really we're right. really looking at kindergarten because yeah. it was so small. Was there a cap for other grades? Did we say 25? What typically was... happens is that once you go over 45, I've been told this is historical practice. Once you have a, about once a grade hits 45 students and you have two teachers at the elementary school, then you start thinking about whether or not you need. A third. a third class that 45 has historically been this magic number we're not written anywhere in stone here that didn't come from the school committee okay all right no. not by vote maybe by right. discussion right. Maybe. Maybe. and, and it's not something the school committee told me this is something that i've yeah. just heard that's that kind of been the practice yeah. Yeah. do we have any historical knowledge about how many go from k to one is it just are all the people in k what we're going to see in one Typically, typically we retain, and and we Are there more that have some students grade? that have indicated to us. We have some families that have said they're thinking about alternatives, but we don't have any families right now that I know of. The last report that I received that were that were thinking about choosing out in the lower grades, they were going to private schools. That's what they were looking at, um, and so we do have some families who are exploring some private school options. And I think we have a couple of um, folks who are looking into our, spe our specialized charter schools, performing arts and Chinese immersion. 
Um, but most students stay with us from K to one. We don't. And are there <coughs> additional students that usually come in at uh, first grade that haven't gone through kindergarten? Yes, we get choice all through elementary. We, we get a lot of students who want to come in. Not a ton, I shouldn't say a lot, across elementary school. It's, Hadley is a place where people want to come to school. People are calling us and saying, when are you going to vote school choice? And most people want to come <laughs> in in kindergarten. So typically, it's kindergarten. This year, kindergarten was the only place where we had a lottery. And that's where we're coming back to this kindergarten. There were people that we, we pulled lottery on kindergarten because the number of people interested exceeded the available slots. And so now we're saying we'd like to open up more slots in kindergarten, and we think we can. Do you need a vote from us? Well, because you voted at that cap of 17, if perhaps you'd like to state that it's it's okay to revisit kindergarten if you want to state the cap in that vote. Um, but I would defer to the school committee on that. Well, yeah, this looks five. like we've only accepted nine, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So we probably still have plenty of room in that 17, but... Um, we also, some of those choice slots were available for Hopkins, too. Oh, oh I Beck see. Mr. Beck will also right. get choice inquiries um, yep. throughout the year sometimes. He has students shadowing throughout the year. The choice inquiries at Hopkins don't time. The elementary folks usually tell us well in advance and get that squared away. And choice in 7 through 12 can happen throughout the year. I guess it doesn't hurt to say we would open up more for kindergarten. For a total cap per class of? 40. 40. Yes. 20 per class, 40 total. Right. Yes. Yes. Motion okay. Classroom. Done. Motion to expand to a maximum cap of 20 per class. Classroom. For a total of 40 in kindergarten. That makes sense. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Are we, mm -hmm. let's see, that was that? Mr. Beck here? No. No, but I do have, he gave me his information. Mr. Beck, uh, Mr. Sudnick is out today, and Mr. Beck is out being the athletic director right now. So uh, I just wanted to provide some information about uh, some senior end of year events, since that's rapidly approaching. I have been sending home weekly emails to families and trying to put these events in there, but I only do it one week in advance. So. Um, we are in our senior last week, and I did say that in my last email. It does really make me sad to say that. They are such wonderful young people. I so enjoy coming into Hopkins and talking with them. They're, they're just a delight. I will miss them. I missed last year's class. I'll miss every class that comes through here. So we have a senior seminar on Tuesday, May 24th. Um, Ms. Sarantino takes uh, students kind of through a closing of the year, end of year safety, being careful. We have prom coming up this weekend. Um, we have a pre-prom assembly on Wednesday, May 25th, and our fire chief and our police chief join us for that. Again, the purpose of that is really to underscore the importance of being safe and responsible. Um, on Thursday, May 26th, we'll have um, some graduation preparation and the second annual Smith Academy versus Hopkins Academy. It's our senior field day. It's a lot of fun. And we also will be doing a voter registration drive. I'm pleased to announce that it, our, one of our graduates from last year, Allison Huntoon, who's a student at Mount Holyoke College, contacted me. And she's active in the this town's Democratic Committee. Is that correct? And not just through her college. And so they are going to do a voter registration drive for Hatfield and Hopkins seniors. All they need to do is bring their license. We'll have laptops there. They can register. If they're 18 years old, register for any party they would like. Uh, we have our Spring Athletic Awards Banquet Thursday, May 26th. Friday, May 27th, we will have a high school awards assembly from 9 to 10.15. The principal will purchase pizza for the seniors at noon and for the superintendent, I will add. I was there last year, it was quite good. And uh, Saturday, May 28th, is the prom at Hickory Ridge. Our senior class trip is next Tuesday, May 31st. Our senior banquet is next Wednesday, meet here at 5 p.m. Class night is Wednesday, June 1st at 7. And graduation is Friday, June 3rd at 6 p.m. Please come and support our graduating class. We look forward to having everyone there. That's our senior update. Questions? Okay. That's great, because you would have to ask the AD, and he's out of the <laughs> right. AD slash principal is out on the we'll field. Outside. And you have a personnel report. So I told you we've appointed uh, 
a um, high school, uh, excuse me, an interim principal elementary. So when we did this report, we didn't have, we hadn't solidified the offer and acceptance, but it is Dr. Joan Wickman. Uh, we've hired a special education coordinator, Tammy Seymour, and she's coming to us from Holyoke. She's currently an educational team leader in Holyoke Public Schools with experience K through um, high school. And we are sad to, as you can see, our nurse Carolyn Sorrentino will be resigning at the end of this year. Huge loss. All of our faculty who's leaving us, just a tremendous loss. Um, Miss Ethier will be completely retiring again. And uh, we have an English teacher at Hopkins Academy who's resigning at the end of this year. And we're grateful for Miss Bernier's service to Hopkins Academy. Uh, we've appointed a speech and language pathologist, Catlin Car Kurana, and we've appointed Mr. Evan Bartlett as our music teacher. Questions on that, folks? Nope. Okay. We have moved on to the public comment period. Hello, public. Nothing? Okay. Chris, you're up. Okay. Um, you can start with the, with the expense report. Um, not a lot of excitement, again, in the report. You might see some um, available balances in the negative. A lot of those have to do with some year-end adjustments we make where we charge um, certain portions of the expenses to the preschool revolving account. Um, right off the bat, the first number, elementary school principal, um, is showing as a negative balance and the year is not done. That's because we take basically this negative amount plus the remainder of the year and that gets charged to the preschool revolving. Um, and there's a bunch of these scattered throughout the um, throughout the report. You know, electricity, water, et cetera. Um, I, should all know, I, I should know this, but it's embarrassing that I'm asking. But even if that wasn't the case, that would be okay because you can have a negative line item as oh, long sure. as the category stays positive, right? As long as the end, okay. end number is above zero, all right. we're all happy, yes. Um, but I just wanted to explain, you know, as okay. you look through the report and you see a number of negatives, um, that is the reason why. Um, we will be closing out um, a lot of the open purchase orders that we have. Certain um, bills that we get on a monthly basis, we basically put aside the entire budgeted amount at the beginning of the year, and then each month when the bill comes in, we just chip away at that amount, uh, rather than writing a purchase order every month for something like the electric bill or something. Uh, we will be closing those out and moving it just into the available balance so that will give us a better picture of what we have you know, remaining for the rest of the year. Um, but I, I don't see any issues. So, um, again, sometimes boring is good, and I guess this is just one of those cases. You know, um, any questions on that? Okay, if we can move to the grant report next. Again, um, a lot of boredom here. Um, basically, and you know, you can see the amount remaining. There are a couple of grants that have zero remaining. Those have already been fully used. Um, if you look at the 298 Sped Early Childhood Grant, that one has now been fully used just between when I ran this report and now. And even items like the the top one, the 140 Title IIA, has had another payroll um, hit it. Basically, it hadn't been posted yet, so I, you know, it, it's not shown on this paper, but it's gone down by about another $2,500. So again, we're running these down. Um, obviously, we use every dollar that's given to us. We don't ever send a check back to the state or federal government for unused funds. So, But we are hoping used. for some circuit breaker carryover, right? Circuit breaker carryover is, is uh, nice and it's welcomed, yes, without a doubt. Um, just because, you know, again, it, it certainly uh, gives us a cushion yep. with any kind of unanticipated sped costs for next year. So yes, that would be the one item on here that you would not see right. going mm -hmm. down to zero. Do you have a prognosis on that? How much we will carry over? Um, I'm hoping for twenty-five to thirty thousand. That would be a. And next good year's guess. claim should be bigger. Yes. Which right. Always good. good point. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when do we find that out? In July. 
Does it require the state budget to pass, or it's or no? I have to file all the um, uh, the claim to get reimbursed. Okay, thank you. And the last item I had was just the generator project update. Um, are you going to talk to us about revolving, revolving accounts? accounts? Oh. It's not so good there. Yeah, that's. You just glossed over that one, didn't you? What I did because I didn't print out a copy for myself. Would you like to see? There you go. Athletic Thanks. is showing 19 to, to the good. School lunch, 9,000 to the bad. Yes, um, the lunch account, uh, you know, and we were in the same boat last year with the lunch account. Uh, and what we ended up doing is transferring, last year it was we transferred $10,000 of the lunch uh, food services administrator's salary to the local budget. We will do something like that again that'll take the expenses out and, and bring the account balance back to above zero. Do we have um, the money for that? Excuse me? Do we have the money in the budget for that? Um, I believe we do, yes. Okay. Last year you had voted to use school choice money, exactly. yeah. but we did not. We did not need to, so I'd prefer to really just keep that, um, yeah. as I'm sure you would as well. Um, preschool again, you know, I mean, it, it's been hovering really around the same amount all year. You can see it's gone down, it's gone back up, um, and it'll probably remain. Well, actually, no, it's going to go down by quite a bit because once I transfer all those expenses oh, right. with the negative balances, it'll go down. Um, so, you know, we'll see that effect in the next month. But really nothing, uh, you know, athletic revolving is showing a nice healthy balance. That was something that a couple of years ago the auditors had kind of just pointed out to us that, you know, you probably shouldn't be consistently just growing this account every year and you should probably utilize some of it. So we have, as you can see, brought it down as far down as around $9,000 and now it's back up to nineteen again. So, uh, you know, I, I'm sure they'll be pleased with the, the churning of the funds and we're pleased with the balance that's in there as well. So, any questions? Oh, no. <laughs> you can see I was just anxious to get to that. Yeah. Um, so the generators, I spoke with the contractor this morning. They had filed for the permit. He thought he had received the permit, um, but he was going to check with his project manager, and I thought I'd hear back from him today, and I did not. So, um, But that is certainly in the works. Um, I know they were here. They did some preliminary drilling and you know stuff like that just to you know, start to get ready to do it. Um, we anticipate that it's going to be done over the cellar on the summer because there's just going to be a lot of noise and and that kind of thing so uh yeah. so there were some problems there were some uh and issues that we had to kind of work and we feel those and problems are resolved and the contractor is coming back on the job the contractor is yes um so i guess you know basically they're they're kind of at a holding point at this point uh, while those things were getting resolved so they took all of the tools out of here and and brought it back with them and then the owner of the company called Jeff the same day and said, well, we took the tools, but we are coming back. So it's not, it's not kind of uh, we walked off the job type of thing. Um, they just they can't go any further until those get ironed out. And uh, I think there was some expectation from the town that no contractor would bring any tools on site until such time as a permit had been issued. Is that your recollection as that well? That is, yes. So that also could have contributed to the need to pack the tools up and go until such time as the permit was issued. And basically now we are just and so I'm, they've requested I'm waiting the for him to get back to me and tell me that, yes, he did, in fact, get the permit. Um, but he has filed for it. Two, yeah, two weeks ago he has. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's basically where we stand at this point. So um, any kind of, of issues that we need to work around, I've asked the contractor to let me know what those might be and we can just make adjustments and move forward. Thank you. We look forward to that project being done. So do and I. And over with. <laughs> Three years, four years. Yes. All right, we have 10 more minutes. School committee reports. Oh, subcommittee assignments, people. Ready? Yeah. Finance committee, tell me if this is all right with everyone. Finance committee, Heather and Paul. The school committee, capital committee, school committee, capital committee. Woo. Linda and Paul, the town capital committee will be Linda, policy, Humira and Roby, CES, Roby through September, Humira after September, 
Technology, Humera, Nutrition and Wellness, Roby, Union Negotiations. I have not talked to Heather about this, but I will. Heather and Humera and Tri Board, we are all welcome. I will try to be the lead on that. Okay? Got that? Mm -hmm. um, Unit D contract. We uh, need to, in open session, uh, adopt the Unit D contract. And I believe we have specific language provided to us by our superintendent and attorney. So I would entertain a motion to accept the Unit D collective bargaining agreement for FY 16 through 18. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nice. Policy subcommittee. We know the policy subcommittee needs to meet. meet. We still outstanding have the school lunch policy. We also need to talk about a stipend issue. Stipend? Mm -hmm. Differential rate issue. Differential rate issue. Have fun, girls. <laughs> <laughs> and the parade is Sunday at 2, my friends. Are doing it again? Yeah, we're doing it. What yeah. What time do you have to be there? Um, I haven't heard. 1.30? <laughs> under the tree? By yeah, the, by the, at the, the Legion. The Legion. With like 55 pounds of candy because we never have enough. Oh, yes. Bring so your candy. candy. Yeah, everyone buy some candy. Oh, and then, yeah. and we need to learn how to ration it out so that we can Raise actually, ourselves. yeah. To ourselves. Hopefully there will not be rain. Don't wear white. <laughs> Don't wear white. <laughs> so are we all going? Yeah, I think so. Perhaps. I'm sure Heather will be going. I'm going to wear white. Okay. Um, and try board I sent an update out to all of you uh, after the last try board meeting. June, at our June, oh, that's what we're doing in June. Our June school committee meeting, hopefully the Capital Committee will have prioritized our capital plan and put together a um, proposal to go to CPA and we will vote on that in June. Mm -hmm. Hopefully our superintendent and business manager will give us our three budget scenarios that we talked about last month for us to review and look at. That would be then both of those, the prioritized capital plan and the three budget scenarios will work with the tri board in July to create a forecast, a budget forecast that's both operating and capital, and then that sets the stage for continued work. And the next tri board meeting is July. July 11th or something. Sorry, hold on. No, 13th. July 13th, 6 to 7. Okay, that's all I have. Humera, mm -hmm. Parent and Community Survey. Yes, thank you so much to my colleagues who um, provided feedback on the survey, on the parent survey. As you can see, we cut back substantially the number of questions while preserving um, really the essence of what we wanted to know about how we were doing in terms of curriculum, instruction, family, community engagement, um, and so forth. And so, um, I incorporated that feedback and um, largely tried to preserve the questions uh, as is that we did go with so that we could compare it to last year's uh, scores. Um, put it in the survey format, sent it out for testing amongst other parents, got some feedback, um, really great feedback that they, uh, that they really wanted to uh, pro provide feedback by, by um, school. So um, how they may rank uh, one school in a certain category will differ dramatically from the other school. Um, so I, given the savings in time, because the overall save, um, survey took about five minutes, we were able to add in the same questions for second school. So now parents are asked whether they have a student in the Hadley Elementary School, and if they do, they complete it, and if they have another child in the Hopkins Elementary, they just added. So five minutes per survey, and um, we launched it on Friday. Thank you, Annie, for including it in the one call um, email as well as phone. We have 66 responses as of today, um, which I'm very pleased with. 
uh, we sent out a Facebook post, and there'll be reminders throughout the week. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, sev next several weeks, and a final, hopefully, one call if you wouldn't mm -hmm. mind on the 17th. Uh, intending to close it on the 20th, do some analysis that week, and then maybe, if all goes well, present it at the next meeting. It's ambitious because I'm traveling wow. three weeks out of the four for June, so I don't want to make promises, no guarantees, but but definitely by July, by the um, evaluation. Did you? Possibly by June. Last year, you all had some help with evaluation, a evaluation analysis committee. I think there were two people. Linda, uh, sorry, Heather, Heather and Ryan. Ryan. Um, I might seek Heather's assistance in the week. Two of us, I haven't told her yet. <laughs> <laughs> I just assigned her to a bunch of committees. Right. Was, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Ryan Scott, who's helped us on the technology yes. committee, was very helpful. I remember right. during the presentation, he was here before I was hired. Yes. I was at one of the meetings. And, and I'm he was sure he'd be, um, he'd be game for it. He was one of my testers, mm -hmm. my testers so sure. I'll, I might tap him for as well. Questions? Thanks for People. Doing that. that was. I so amazing. I believe so yeah. strongly in the power yeah. of feedback. So um, I'm so glad we're doing it. It's been two years. So mm -hmm. I actually have this podcast too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ruby? Um, CES? Oh. No. Uh, we see need it. to vote on the budget oh, uh, Wednesday. Uh, and, uh, oh, the CES board. I'm sorry. CES okay. budget for fiscal year 17. Um, I don't expect the district assessments to go up, but uh, fees for SPED programs will probably rise. By? Uh, uh, for next year. But do it by 2.5%, by 18%? Oh, it was so early in the morning when we had that meeting. Um, not outrageously. Do you, do you, Pat, the SPED directors have been told, right? Well, Hadley doesn't have anybody in Heck Academy. Oh, no, this I see. These are special usually, programs. correct me if I'm wrong, but usually it's not a percentage increase across the board, but individual programs, the tuition, right, so right, it wouldn't yes, be yes, one. Right, right. So it's based on you have to distribute right. the expenses based on your average enrollment, and exactly. so that changes from program to program. So it's hard to say they'll go up okay. by two percent. All right. And right. usually, most collaboratives keep their programs competitive to market when they look at the OSD, which is the Operating Services Division, publishes all the prices for all approved placements. So, it's but it's hard to quote one increase. Yeah, every every program has a different thing because it depends on the number of students. Mm -hmm. Okay. But Ruby, question: yes. Have they increased the per pupil membership for the district? No. Is that 360 people? Yes. Something like that? It's yes. That didn't go. Yeah. No. Okay. Do you want to do your votes and move on? Oh, do we have any other votes? No, you do. My most. Do I got voluntary recognition and school choice. Oh, we need to um, have a motion that we transfer up to $60,000 from school choice into the special education line to meet expenses. Motion to transfer $60,000 from the school choice account into special education. Second. Second. All in favor of that? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. We did the revised budget. We did the Unit D contract. Unit recognition. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Um, we need to voluntarily recognize the United Public Server Employees Union Local 424M. Motion to voluntarily recognize United Public Service Employees Union Local 424M, subject to the required posting under the regulation of the Division of Labor Regulations. Second. All in favor of that? Aye. Thank you. Okay. And our next meeting is June 27th. That's all good Great. for people? Uh, sorry, June 27th. Unless we, yeah, 5.30 regular session. Yes. No. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. So it's no three weeks. So no you human. Well, we do have a Oh, we have a remote participation possibility. We have that really? possibility. Yes. As long as there's a physical quorum present. Right. right. Then you can yep. remote. Um, I, uh, it would be, hmm. Well, keep us informed. I'll, okay. well, I'll contact Heather. Right, it's true. I have done it. Um, I think it.
Timing-wise, I might be presenting a paper at an annual conference at that time. So let me just double check. You couldn't excuse yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you, I could add that to our agenda. I'd love a motion, motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you sure you can? You can, you check? Yeah. I just want to make sure I didn't miss any votes. I'm sorry. No, we went through it all. Okay. We got them all. Thank We've you. We've been here for four hours. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. 4.30. We started at 4.30. 7.30. Seconded. Motion to adjourn. Second. Not bad. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.